So as I mentioned, we are kind of jumping into the middle of last week's lecture. I'm just going to remind you where it was we left off. So I was running this um, database uh, called AdventureWorks on my own computer. And we, we did a simple select statement. You guys remember the select statements in SQL just fetches stuff from the database. And we fetched everything in the person, in the person table of the database. Um, so we fetched everything in the person table and there were 19,972 people in the person table. So this is what the statement looked like. But hmm, the, the main goal of last week's lecture, because we had already covered SQL previously, the main goal was figuring out how exactly do we work with data inside C Sharp. So, you know, it's great having an SQL database somewhere, but it's useless if you can't do stuff with the data you're storing, right? And SQL is... SQL is a powerful language, but it doesn't have some of the things that C Sharp has, like repetition structures and conditionals, um, or like at least advanced conditionals, like switch statements and if statements and stuff like that. Um, and just generally, um, C Sharp has more functionality when it comes to things like Windows Forms and console-based applications um, and websites. So you want to be able to work with that data that you have stored in your database inside C Sharp. So that's kind of what we learned last week, where we learned how to connect to a database. So what we do is we set ourselves up as an SQL client, because we're a client. Our application is a client for an SQL server. So we say using system.data.sql client. And that gives us a whole bunch of classes that allow us to connect to a database. One of them is SQL connection. And the SQL connection um, object, we can just give it this thing called the connection string, which you can see over here, which specifies the source of the database, which in this case is just user PC. That's just the name of my computer. Um, the catalog, which is AdventureWorks, that's just the name of the database. Um, and it can specify some other options as well, um, which aren't really strictly relevant. Um, so the SQL connection is one thing that it provides. It also provides an SQL command, which is basically just how they say query. Um, although not all queries fetch some fetch things, right? Because there are queries like update and delete that don't fetch stuff, right? They modify stuff. So, um, but we'll see, we'll see that in a bit. Um, so here we've got SQL command. We link the command to the connection. Um, so we create a command from the connection. Okay, so command dot command text is just a standard SQL query. We then opened up the connection to the database. We ran the command. So we say command dot execute reader, and all this did is it executes it and it gives back. So this execute reader method it goes to the connection, executes whatever command you specified here. Um, and gives you back an SQL data reader, SQL data reader, which as you guys saw is very similar to the file reader that we saw a while back, back in chapter five, and also the XML reader that we saw last week, where you can just say reader.read. And actually there was a specific word to describe what these readers do. Uh, I do wonder if any of you remember, um, I drew your attention to it. There were sort of three main terms that Visual Studio itself used to describe these, um, these objects. Um, like how XML reader, I'll, I'll remind you of two of the words I told you to basically ignore them. The first two words were FOST and non-cached. But there was a third term that they used to describe the XML reader and this SQL data reader as well that sort of describes how they work sort of describes how they work. Um, so does anyone remember that term? Or does anyone remember what the term was even trying to suggest? How do these work? How do these readers work? What would we call it? Right, you almost go through the file. What did we call it? Does anyone remember? We did mention it very briefly, but it will come up again later. So I, I was interested to see if anyone remembered. Um, Ah, glad you made it back, Joshua, because I saw you disconnected temporarily. Okay, it doesn't seem like anyone remembers. That's okay. Um, so the, the term it used was, oh, maybe I can give you a hint instead, although no, no I think it's just a waste of time. So um, I'll, I'll open, okay, so you can see the blurb there now. Does anyone know what term? Now that you can see that blurb, what term was I referring to? 
Can anyone take a guess at what term that I, I was trying to refer to here? That really effectively describes how these reader, um, reader classes work, like the XML reader and this SQL data reader. They have a certain way of reading the data. Can anyone see, now that the blurb is open, what term I'm trying to get you to refer to? So read that first sentence and you guys tell me, what term do you think really stands out there for us? Okay. So the term I'm trying to refer to here is forward only. Okay, forward only. So it's an, it's an important idea to grasp. You can only go through the data, okay? You process each row once, okay? You can't jump around. You can't do any fancy processing with the data. And it's the same with the XML data reader, right? It reads each node um, and each element just once. It goes through the XML file. You're not gonna do any fancy processing with it. Um, it's just for reading, basically. And it reads line by line by line, okay? Or in this case, row by row. Um, so that's what this reader.read is doing. It just reads the next line. And then you can process that line. It reads the line after that. You can process that line. It reads the line after that. And you can process that line. And it goes on and on and on. Um, so if you guys recall, I can run this code quickly uh, by saying console, console app one. And you can see all it does is it fetches all of the data and outputs it to the console. Okay. Um, fetches all of the all of the data from the database. Okay. And there's quite a lot, 19,972 names. So it's a lot of data. Um, that it fetches, but we managed to fetch it into, into C Sharp. So that's where we left off last week. Um, but then I told you that there were more advanced ways to execute these commands, okay? So here we said select star from adventureworks.person.person. .person. So we fetched the whole table and we wanted to process the whole table, okay? When we wanna do something like that, we, we use execute reader, execute reader, because that just, um, that just runs the query on, on the connection, so on the database, it runs the query and it just returns the full SQL response. Okay, it returns the entire response. So it basically returns this whole thing, okay. this whole thing. That's what, that's what it does when we say execute reader. But there are other commands, as I alluded to previously, that don't fetch the entire table or that don't require the entire table. So I can give you an example of one of these simple commands. This will be a new, um, something you haven't seen in SQL before. Um, but it's quite it's quite cool. It's a it's an interesting interesting um, thing that you can do with SQL. So in C sharp, instead of saying execute reader, you can also use this thing execute scalar, execute scalar. And what that does is it just returns the first cell. Okay, it just returns the first cell. So instead of returning the entire query, like the entire table, it will just return the first cell. So I can give you an example of that. If we ran this query, select star from adventureworks person dot person. If we use execute reader, it returns this entire table, this massive table here, okay? If we use execute scalar, it's just gonna return this, okay, that one. It'll just return that first cell, the top left cell. So it won't return the first row. It won't return the first column. It will return just the first cell, just one cell. Now, when you see that, you might go, wow, that looks really quite useless. Why, why would you want to return just the first cell? So let me show it to you first, and then I'll show you what, why it can be very useful, okay? So I don't know what the first cell, I don't know what object it is, so I'm just going to say var, okay, var. And just because like, I don't know what type it's going to be, I don't know what type I'm getting from the first cell, so I'm just going to call it a var. Um, and then we're going to say, instead of, we're just going to console.writeLine, whatever that var is, okay? Console.writeLine, whatever that var is. So reader, okay? Because var reader, okay? So remember, var is just that fancy type that you can use when you don't know what type it's going to be, okay? Cool. So I'm going to build that, um, and I'll go and execute the code now. So remember, it's running the same query. Ooh, sorry about that. Let me just say execute scalar instead. So it's running the exact same query. The only difference is that I'm using execute scalar instead of execute reader. So let's go see what it returns now instead of, instead of what it returned previously. Um, so now I'm gonna run this. You see it just returned one, just one, okay? Why did it return one? It's as I explained, it just returned this first cell. Now you can see with this particular query, 
that's not particularly useful, right? Like with this query, we want to return all of the information, okay? Um, but for a query where that might be very useful is if I go to the asterisks, you guys remember the asterisks means all, okay? Around the asterisks, I can type count. So I can say count like that and put some brackets around the asterisks. Okay. Can any of you predict what this is gonna do? What number do you think this is gonna return? Can I ask you guys that much? What number will you think, do you think this will return? If we scroll down, so that's all the items in our database. What do you think count star is gonna do? Just from your intuition, you haven't seen it before, so don't feel bad if you don't get it, but give me a guess even. Um, just to get some interaction going in this class, because I know we did jump into it. It's going to count everything. Yeah, that's that's probably correct, Saham. That sounds good. So what is it going to return? What is it going to return? If, if this thing goes ahead and counts everything. And what do we mean by everything? So like, what do you predict, Saham? What do you think it's going to return? Let me ask you this. How many items are there in our database? In our person table, sorry. How many items are there in our person table? How many records or how many rows? How many rows are there in our person table? You can see the answer on the screen. I can tell you that much currently. Okay, cool. Yeah, it, it will. But let's see, okay, cool, both of you got it, that's good. So let's see how it returns it though. So remember, execute scalar, um, this execute scalar command that we're learning about will return only the first cell. So the previous query we, query we were running returned all of these things. Um, and the first cell was just a one, which is really useless. But let's see what this query does. So I'm gonna run it and look what it returns. It returns one cell that holds 19,972. Okay. Now that makes this, this execute scalar, that will make it super useful. So if I change the query that we run inside our console-based application to count star, and then I use execute scalar, it's just gonna return the first cell, which is exactly what we want, right? We just need the first cell. All we need is that one cell. So I'm gonna um, build this again. Okay, like so. I'm going to go ahead and run it. Okay, and you can see it returns 19,972. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, it's, it's nice that that worked. Okay, it's really nice that that works. Cool, so what, what does Execute Scalar do? It will run the query, but it will only return the first cell. And it doesn't matter what query you give it. It can be select star from adventureworks.person.person. .person. You can select any other table. You can add a where statement. Whatever query you give it, this execute scalar thing is literally just going to return the first cell. It's going to return just the first cell. Okay. Cool. So just some revision quick. Um, just I just want to ask you guys. What if I only wanted to get names? Let's actually, yeah, we can see. Let's try to figure out um, what if, if this database has any of our names. I, I think it's American, so I doubt it will, but we, we can try it out at least. Um, so what if this, this here is selecting the entire person table, right? Do you guys remember? What can I add to make it only return um, or only select when, when one of our names is used. What, what, what would I have to add to this query, guys? Um, if, you write, if you write up what I'll have to add, then maybe I'll use, uh, use what you write up. Like, I think. Like, I mean, like definitely came up somewhere. Like was how we could specify conditions. Um, but there was a word before that. Um, there was a word before the like. Like was just one way to create a condition, almost like equals or, um, or less than or greater than. That's what like did. But there was another word, a very similar word, Sam. Well, is it a similar word? I guess it is. It is a similar word. Okay, so Saham said like. Does anyone have any other ideas? Like is definitely relevant. It was, it was one kind of thing. We could use like to specify patterns. 
but we had to give another word to, in order to be able to specify any condition, any condition that we wanted. So we'd go right here. And remember, you can read SQL as English. So think about it. How would you say this in English? Select all from AdventureWorks person. So select all from person. What do I have to add in order to exclude certain rows, guys? What do I have to add? And feel free to look into your book as well, because I'm definitely not telling you this one, because you guys must know it and you must remember it. How will I exclude certain rows from the query? What am I going to use? What word are we going to use? Come on, someone, save us. <laughs> Select all from person. What word will allow us to exclude certain rows? Yeah, no one remembers. That's brutal. Okay. Hmm. So let me think if I can give you guys any hints. I mean, it is sort of like how you would say it in English. It's almost like SQL's version of the if statements, almost. Um, so it's almost like you're trying to say, you know, when a certain thing is true. Select star from person. I could use, I mean, it, it would make as much sense to use the word when, but they don't use the word when, they use a different word. Select star from person when something is true, you could say in English. Finally, yo. Okay, thank you, Saham. Okay, where is the word, guys? Where? Okay, so if I want to exclude people with certain names, I can say where person dot first name, person dot first name. And I could say a lot of different things. I could say where the first name is not something. Okay, so if I said like, where the first name is not Joshua, for example. That will give me every single person in the database whose name is not Joshua. Okay, so if I execute that, um, we can check out the results. Let's see if anyone had the name Joshua, actually. I'm not sure. Uh, so 19,946. Okay, so there were some people who had the name Joshua inside this database. How many? 20, is that 24? Uh, 27, sorry. Oh, 26. Okay, there were 26 Joshua's. Although let's, in order to just make sure, we can say where person dot first name equals Joshua. Okay, so now it'll give us only the Joshua's. Okay, uh, and there were 26. Cool. So there were 26 Joshua's in this table. Um, I don't think there'll be a Joshua Win because that's a fairly unique name. Um, I don't think any of our night. Yeah, so no Joshua Wins in the table. Let's try out a few names. Um, let's see if the Americans included a Jatin. They did not. Um, maybe a Saham. Nope. Uh, a Ria. Nope. Okay. Sorry, guys. You guys, you guys have names that are too unique, um, or at least not American, um, not used by Americans. Anyway. Okay. So yeah, we use the where statement to exclude certain rows. Um, okay. I, I have another question for you now, um, guys. How would I modify specific rows? What if, let's check this out. If I say where person dot first name equals, hey, nice. Okay, we're on the ball now. I'm glad I didn't have to wait super long for that one. Okay, so cool. We have 93 people in the database who have the name Ali. Okay, 93 people in the database have Ali. Okay. So if I want to change all of the Ali's to Alexandra's, um, Saham, you're precisely right. We had used the update statement. So I'm going to say, instead of select all from person, I'm going to say update the person table, update the person table. I'm going to say set first name. And I'm going to set it to Alexandra, okay. Alexandra, like that. So remember, there were 93 Alexandras. So now you guys know when we were doing this in DB Fiddle, we had to say the query as well, right? So like this would go ahead and update the table, but it didn't give us any response. In order to actually see the response, we would have to run a select statement as well, right? 
So this is not a normal query. It modifies the table, but it doesn't return anything. We're not asking the database for something. We're telling the database something. So you see when I run this, you see it doesn't give me back a table. It says 93 rows affected, 93 rows affected. If I run this again, because now all of the alleys have been changed to Alexandra, so there's no more alleys in the, in the table. If I run this again, um, you can see that it says, ooh, uh, what did I, what did I, did I change something? You can see it says zero rows affected, zero rows affected, okay? Why did it say zero rows affected? Because there's no more alleys to change to Alexandra. If I flip it back, I say change the Alexandras back to alley. It's going to say 93 rows affected, okay? Uh, when I actually run the command. There we go, 93 rows affected. Okay. So we can run these commands from C sharp as well. Okay. So I'm going to copy paste this command. I'm going to make this one change the alleys to Alexandra um, so that it actually has an effect. Okay. So that'll change alley to Alexandra. And you see it says 93 rows affected. Um, inside C sharp, we're going to run the other command. We're going to change Alexandra to Ali. Okay. So this should also still affect 93 people. It should affect 93 people, right? So there's a way of doing this as well. So there's execute reader, which returns the entire response into an SQL data reader. There's execute scalar, which returns only the first cell. And then there's execute non-query. See, they call it non-query because it's not a query. You're not asking the database for something. You're telling the database something. By saying update or delete, you're telling the database something. So you execute non-query because you're changing things in the database, okay? So what will this do? It will return the number of rows your query affects. Okay, guys. So now you see previously I was saying var reader equals execute scalar. If I go ahead and execute non-query instead, because now I'm updating, what type is this going to be? What type are we going to get back from execute non-query, guys? Because we do know the type now. It's going to return the number of rows our query affects. In fact, you guys don't have to tell me just the type. I want you guys to tell me the type and the value we're going to get back. What type should I make reader, guys, now? What type am I going to make reader? knowing that execute non-query is going to return the number of rows affected by our query. It should be an int. Okay, cool, that's correct. And can someone tell me what value are we gonna get? If our code works, what value are we gonna get? What value will this print out? Because you see, we're going ahead, we're updating um, first name to Ali where first name equals Alexandra. What number are we gonna get, guys? Exactly. Okay. So now we know if the code works, it is going to output 93. Okay. It's going to output 93. It's going to go to the database. It's going to run that query and execute non-query is going to return the number of rows that it affects. Okay. So let's go ahead. Let's run it. 93. Okay. So you see it output at 93. Now what happens if I run this again, guys, if I ran the same query again, what value am I going to get now? So zero, exactly. There we go. I know we return zero. Okay, so that's working perfectly. So those are the three ways we can run an SQL command from C sharp. We can use execute reader, execute scalar, which is just, just returns the first cell. It, um, execute scalar, obviously, because it doesn't have to get the entire response. It's faster than a normal query. It's very good for counting, okay? It runs faster than execute reader because it doesn't have to create an SQL data reader. It just returns you whatever the first cell is. So that's much smaller, okay? So execute scalar is faster. That's why we use it for things like counting. Um, and execute non-query is if we're running a command and we just need to know how many rows we affected, we can use execute non-query. So those are the three ways um, that we can, can run these, these SQL commands. Okay, cool. So that's that. On to the next bit. So you guys might be wondering, like, how do we save this data? So we now know how to fetch various bits of data from a database, right? Like we can just type our standard SQL queries into C sharp like this. Um, and, and 
that will go ahead. So select star from adventureworks.person.person. That'll go ahead and fetch all of the stuff from, from our database, okay? Um, fairly straightforward. But hmm, what would we actually do with this data? So, I mean, if you're fetching a huge amount of data, um, especially if it's going into something like an SQL data reader, right? Um, like as we discussed a little bit earlier, the SQL data reader is forward only. Remember, it's forward only. You can only process this data once. Um, and it's, it's like quite expensive to do such a large query. You can see the program takes quite long to run. Um, you have to open up a connection, right? We have to put it in a try catch because it's quite risky. Like what are we actually gonna do with this data? And you can imagine in like even more complicated cases, like what if our, what if our database holds some images or some music or some videos? Like what would we actually do with this when, when, we, when we download it from the database or when we process it? Like what, would, what can C Sharp do that, that we couldn't do with just SQL, okay? Um, so one interesting way of storing this data that we fetch from a database or even storing data that we're gonna give to a database um, is flat files. Okay, flat files. So there's a lot of important ideas to have about flat files. Like you can imagine a profile picture. There's no type inside SQL for like a profile picture. How a profile picture would be stored is you'll store the path to a file that has the profile picture, like to the .png file. So you store the path inside the database and you just fetch the file from that path. Okay. Um, so these files that a database uses to store data, um, and, and this can be data that hasn't yet been put in the database or data that is in the database, we call it flat files. We call them flat files. So there's one, one obvious way to create flat files is XML, okay? We saw XML in last week's lecture, so we don't have to cover it again. But there are two other ways we can make these flat files, okay? So, um, the system.io namespace provides ways that we can work with them. We call these streams and backing stores. So I'm just going to explain this idea of a stream quick. You have seen the word stream before back in chapter five. Um, and it's, it's a fairly simple idea, okay? It's the same as a stream of water. It has quite a good name, a stream of water in a way. Um, all this means is a sort of path that data takes from a source to a destination. Okay, and it's like a path through memory or a, um, a path over, yeah, a path through memory, basically, like it's being processed in something, okay? So we call both the source and the destination a backing store. The source and the destination are called backing stores. And the place where the data waits to be processed or the place that processes the data and passes it from the one backing store to the other backing store is called the stream, okay? So you've seen examples of this before. This might sound quite esoteric, um, but to pin it down for you as an example, we could have a stream that goes from a database to a file, okay? Which one, one stream that you've already seen, if I jump back to our earlier code, I'm just gonna contr control Z to undo all our previous changes. We're going back to um, where we had that little while loop printing out everyone's name. This is a stream, okay? So what we're doing is, I'll, I'm gonna say build solution um, and, and think about it. How would you describe a stream of water? You might say that it's forward only or even downwards only, I guess. But the point is the water all goes in one direction down the stream and it's the same here, right? These are all forward only. All of these readers are forward only. So when I run this, you can see this is a stream. Our source is the database and our destination is the console, okay? So we have a stream that flowed from the database to the console, okay? And likewise, we could have a stream that flows from the database to a file, or we could have a stream that flows from a file to the console, or a stream that runs from the console to the database. These are all streams, okay? So hopefully that makes some sense to you guys. Um, and so we're just gonna talk brief. I'm gonna show you like how you might work with the stream. Um, the important thing here more is just understanding the, the kind of theory um, aspect of it, like why they exist, what they do. Um, but there is this, there's this one important distinction that um, you guys must remember, okay? So system.io provides these ways for working with streams, um, some ways for working with streams. Um, and 
So there's two really important ones that you must grasp other than, other than the XML ones, Ken. Okay? So these are the two. There's stream reader and stream writer, which I'm gonna show you a stream writer now. You saw kind of like a stream reader previously with the XML example. We're gonna see a stream writer now, but stream reader and stream writer or for writing with text files. Oh, hello, Joanne. Um, oh yeah, you, you were coming. You, you're quite early though, right? Because it's... Uh... What, what time is that, Joanne, Josh? Um, yeah, I mean, you can, you can stay, it's chilled. I, I don't know, I think we should finish. There's just one more slide after this. So, so this slide here. Um, so I don't know, we should be finished by four. I, I didn't tell no, you guys, I'll, we have I'll a guest. I'll back in. Okay, cool. Um, see you later then. <laughs> Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Uh, yeah, we have a guest today, guys. Um, but yeah, anyway, okay, let's get back to it. So um, we have stream reader and stream writer and binary reader and binary writer. Okay, so, uh, so I'll show you guys a stream writer now, but stream readers and stream writers are for working with text files, okay? And like, I don't mean anything fancy, it's, it's a standard text file, okay? So I'm gonna, I'll create one now. I'm gonna create a text file called person.txt. And what we're gonna do is instead of the stream here where we had a stream from the database to um, the console, I'm instead just gonna make this a stream from the database to that text file, okay? And you'll see it'll be super, super easy um, to do, okay? Um, so text files are good for a lot of stuff, like especially the information we're storing now, it will, it will go really well in a text file. You know, it's just a list of names, but there are, pieces of data like um, images and sounds and videos where storing them in a text file would not be ideal, right? Because one good thing about a text file is that they're human readable, um, they're easily, easily understood, but like those kinds of things aren't supposed to be understood in text files. So if we were storing like video or images or sounds, we would instead use this thing called a, a binary reader or binary writer, where it's the same as a stream reader or stream writer, except it's just zeros and ones. Okay, and so that's how we store videos and pictures and sounds and they're slightly faster to read. So we would use a binary reader and binary writer for that. Okay, um, but cool. I'm just gonna show you a, a stream writer quickly and you'll see how easy it is to port this code across. So we can say, um, currently we're writing to the console and you'll see how easy it is to write to the file instead, right? Because I have told you before, this console is basically just like a long text file, right? It's just lines of text. Um, so you'll see how easy it is to write to a text file instead. I'm just going to open a stream writer. So stream writer. Okay. And you see this comes from system.io. So system.io is there. That's the namespace. So stream writer, I'm going to call it writer equals new stream writer. Okay. New stream writer. I'm going to give it the file that I want to read from, which is person.txt. Uh, it was person.txt, right? That's what we called it. Yeah, person.txt, cool. And now instead of saying console.writeline, I'm just gonna say writer.writeline. Okay, writer.writeline. And that is the only change I have to make, guys. Now, instead of writing to the console, so I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna, oh, I need to build the code first, of course. So I'm gonna say build solution, there we go. Um, so I'm just going to run this now. So uh, just run it. You see it outputted nothing here. There's nothing here. Nothing. But if I go over to our text file and I open our text file, here's all the names, all 19,972 names. Okay. See. So now it's just instead of going from um, the instead of going from the database to the console, it's now just going to the file instead. Okay. Makes sense. So that's a stream writer. Okay. Good stuff. Cool. So on to one last thing. Now I reminded you of this term a lot. All of these readers, like the XML reader, the SQL data reader, stream readers, they are all forward only, right? They go line by line by line by line but sometimes we want to hold some more complex data, okay? And we wanna hold it in the computer's memory. And c -sharp provides a way to do that called a data set, okay? And this is the last thing we need to cover in the course. And this was this little extra thing that, that um, uh, it's, it's on like the last page 
we weren't according to our course pack we are not officially supposed to teach it to you even because they um but there is one important question that they can ask about it so i want you guys to be prepared for anything okay so this is this is it so um a c-sharp data set so instead of using like all these flat files and these readers we can instead just store all of that data inside the computer's memory right um and that that's really good if we're using the data frequently and if we want to like work with it in some special way okay so system.data provides the class data set so system.data provides this class called the data set and it can store all of this information this really these like tables and rows and columns it can store it inside the computer's memory rather than just in that forward only line by line way okay so we can store this relational data inside the computer's memory okay which is like a very efficient thing for us to be able to do okay there are two ways to populate a data set you can use you can read the data set from xml by saying like data set dot read xml and it's it's like very simple it just works you just give it the name of the xml file you can also write xml so if you have a data set you can just say dot write xml and it'll just create an xml file and automatically save your data set to you to the xml file um that's not too special though the the one that i want to show you is this sql adapter okay so we were using this sql data reader which just executes whatever command we have and it just takes that command um to to the database runs it and gives us the entire response back in that forward only way instead of sql data reader though we can use what's called an sql data adapter okay so an sql data adapter just needs two things okay it needs a string with the command that it is going to run so string command equals that okay that's the command that we're going to run so it just needs the string that it's going to be running and it needs the connection that it is running the command on okay so we've got the connection over here all right we've got the connection over here okay so we've got our connection and we've got the command that we're going to be running you can give these to the sql data adapter so you can see there's an sql data reader that's what we were using previously but the data adapter is more adaptive right as its name suggests it can adapt the data um in memory So we're going to take the SQL the data adapter I'm going to call it adapter and we can just give it we're just going to give it um both the so I'm going to say new SQL data adapter and we just give it the connect the the command that we are running um so we give it the command we're running and the connection that we are running that command on so the command we're running is this string over here select star from person and the connection we are running on is connection okay the connection defined here this sql connection okay let's see what the sql data adapter says it says initializes a new instance of the sql data adapt oh let's see it here okay represents a set of data and commands in a database connection that are used that's so that's whatever so it's got it's got the command in the database connection the important thing here is that it's used to fill the data set So the only reason a data adapter exists is to fill a data set. So I'm going to create a data set. I'm going to say data set data set. I'm going to call my data set ds person. ds person because that's because we're storing the person table in our data set. And I'm going to say equals new data set. Okay, data set equals new data set. Exactly as if I was creating a rectangle or something that you guys have seen previously, okay? um or a, a golem i think we created and ninjas and stuff cowboys all of that stuff we created previously all those previous classes that we've created um this is the same it's just a data set data set ds person equals new data set and now i can use the adapter to fill the data set so adapter.fill i give it the data set that i want to fill ds person and i can give it the um the the name of the table that i want to use to fill the data set is person okay So I'm filling the data set called DS person with the person table. And now that entire table is um inside the computer's memory, okay? Now, can does anyone remember how can I um iterate over a collection, guys? Does anyone remember that? What repetition structure would we use to iterate over a collection? Does anyone know? Because this This data set could hold any number of tables, it could hold any number of rows. 100% Jatin. Good job. You're on the ball. That's cool. So, we are going to say for each data table 
So there's a bunch of tables. We're going to get each table for each table in our data set called BS person, BS person dot tables. So for each table in our data set, okay, and for each row in each table. So for each data row, row in um, table dot rows. So for each row in each table, in this case, we only have one table. We've only got the person table. And that table has, how many rows does it have, guys? Does anyone remember? How many rows does this table have? If, if everything's working correctly, how many rows do you think this for each loop is going to go over? Anyone have any ideas? Remember, so we just got the entire person table, hey? 19,972, 100%. So I'm just going to print out console.writeline. And what's cool now is the entire table is in memory. So I can literally just use the name of the column that I want. So I can say, um, so we're going to output just, let's stick to outputting the first name and the last name. So I'm going to say row. Okay. So in each row, I want to get the, oh, sorry about that. Um, in each row, I want to get the first name and the last name. Sorry, and the last name. Okay, cool. Um, and I'm just printing them out to the console. So I'm going to go build the solution. And you can see this is going to give a very familiar output by now. Um, you can see it gives me the output of all of the first names and last names. The difference is now, though, is the entire table is inside the computer's memory. Okay, which is why it took maybe a little bit longer to run. Um, if you didn't know, there's like the, if you didn't notice, there's that little stall at the beginning. Okay, so this is the data set. This is, this is all a data set is. Um, and we just use, yeah, for each, because we've got a collection of tables um, at data set dot tables, and each table has a collection of rows. And you can see it says, get the collection of rows that belong to this table. And table says, get the collection of tables that belong to this data set, okay? So um, yeah, we just use a for each loop to go over the data set. And then you can just use the name of the columns to get each column, which is really useful. Um, and you can even, you can create relations and stuff. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff with data sets um, that maybe you would learn about in like a more, uh, if, you, if you did more courses in C Sharp. Okay. But anyway, that is that, guys. Um, so I'm going to see is, so Joanne left, right? I think so. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to message uh, Joanne. Um, so guys, I think let's do a 10 minute break and then I'll get Joanne to join after the 10 minute break. So let's break until like 15.55, okay? Um, let's break until like 15.55. I'll get Joanne to join then. Um, I'm gonna go set up in the lounge quickly just so that I can, uh -huh. yeah. So yeah, come back at 15.55, guys. We're gonna have a chat, but that is all the content for the course. So uh, congratulations, I suppose, on, on finishing the MTA. You guys were lovely to teach and I'll see you again during our revision sessions, but um, do stay now uh, until Joanne joins so that we can uh, talk and whatever, get some feedback. Yeah, it is the end. Uh, this was our last lecture. Uh, let me see. So, Miss King Kong, who is this? Who is this? Can you tell me so that I can put you on the register? Huh, okay. You, you, wasn't your username, it used to be Thelma, I'm sure. Because I do remember seeing this username at the end of last week's lecture, but you changed it. That's cool. Gummy bear. Yes, that's the one that I associated with you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, cool. Yeah, good to, good to have some change occasionally, I think. So that's chill. Um, ah, Joshua left. That's unfortunate. He, did he message on the group or something explaining why? No, I don't think so. Pity. Okay. But yeah, I'll see you guys at 15.55. I'm just going to set up my sort of laptop now quickly.
Um, so yeah, be back now. Um, no, we're gonna, I, I think we're discussing revision and those, you know, those database modules, Saham, you're gonna be asked for some feedback. You did them, right, Saham? Please tell me you did. Um, you did like those database modules. Those two that I posted on the group. Cause I posted a lot of reminders, guys. I hope someone did them. I know Connor did them, but Connor's not here. So that's unfortunate. Um, they'll be... Oh, oh, that's horrible. I think Joanne might be angry at me now. I guess it's okay. Did anyone else do them? I did the first and like half of the second. Okay, cool. Then we're relying on you, Ria. Um, so yeah, I'll see you at 15.55. I'm glad. Um, I think some other people did them. Uh, no, no, fair enough, Saham. It is a busy time for you guys. Uh, but make sure you do them before the test because I think it'll help you guys. Um, okay, I'm quickly just going to set up um, so that I can use my camera on my laptop. One second, guys. I'll be back right now. Okay, that's good, I think. Hopefully you guys can hear me clearly. Ooh, ah, okay, I've got it, my phone. Yeah, I did, uh, yeah, I messaged Joanne, so she should join us at like 15.55. Cool, I'm glad to hear you did some of them, Ria, that's good to know. Ah, How's it going? Good. So, okay, we have at least one person who's gotten through some of them. Um, <laughs> and yeah, Connor, Connor as well did some, but I'm not sure. He's absent today, but he didn't tell me anything, which is strange. Okay. Um, if there's only one, does it make sense for me to, I mean, I kind of think... So, oh, no, sure. no, no, I don't know. I don't know who, who else might have. Uh, I haven't asked yet. Oh, I see. Got gotcha. you. Um, maybe one of the Charles brothers. So I think Jatin is representing three people. Um, There's three people on the one camera with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. His, I think he and his brothers usually use the one account. Oh, that makes sense. Cool, cool. Well, let me know when I must uh, leap in. I'll just wait. I'll mute myself until then. Yeah, we're just on break until like uh, five two.
Okay, guys, are you back? Everyone, please post in the chat if you're back. Uh, say like here yeah, or something or why. Or yeah, F to pay respects to our guest. Um, okay, yeah, I guess we can go F. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, Joanne, I think we can, if you have questions. Cool. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm joining you just, I, I don't know if Josh gave you a heads up that I'd be joining you. But, I um, didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it's Joanne from Vita Futures. Um, I'm really wanting to say hi to you guys today to get some feedback on the online uh, database module that you guys uh, were sent. And I just wanted to get a sense, maybe if I can ask before I kick off, just to ask on the chat, if you can tell me uh, one, if you did it, if you went online and did the database modules, there were two weeks, um, I believe. So tech, it was it, the URL was called Tech Roads One on Tech Roads Two. Um, so one, if you did it. Two, if you didn't. One, if you. Did. That's so confusing because there's two. <laughs> just, just do it, guys. Okay, yes or no, whatever, whichever one you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> As Ria said she did uh, like the first one and half of the second one. Um, I don't know. Jatin, Azam, Thelma. So Ms. how didn't you one? answer one of Connor's questions about the thing? I don't know. So guys, do you know what I'm talking about? I think it's also radio. difficult because they don't have a official name. <laughs> um, I've been referring to them as database modules. Yeah. Hmm. I'm hearing radio silence. Do you want to, uh, uh, do you guys ever unmute yourselves and just uh, ask the question live? You didn't, yeah, so do, it, didn't do it. Okay. Can I just hear from uh, everyone who has done it? Because I want to know whether it makes sense for me to uh, ask you guys for feedback today or whether I come back another day when people have uh, had a chance to do it. Okay, Azam, Azam hasn't. Uh, and so Ria, I don't know. I mean, you can give some feedback, can't you? Ria, are you the only person that's done it? <laughs> the only person I think there, there are other people who have done it. But honestly, I really enjoyed it. Um, it was it was quite fun to do as well. And it put everything together in place, especially with the coding questions where we had to practice on ourselves, by ourselves. And if we made a mistake, we could try again until we got it right. So that, that was really nice. You're talking about the week two, hey, Ria? Yes. Week two when and you were... Week one. When you were, but when you had to do the live coding um, on the IDE. Yes. Yes. Okay. So you like that part. You like being able to um, 
Can I just ask, I guess, uh, two, two quick questions for those that did, um, that, that know what Rhea is talking about. Uh, what was your kind of favorite part of it? And you can talk about both week one and week two. And what was the parts that you really didn't like or would have liked to see improved? Um, and I'll just keep it very short today. Did, did you hear that, Rhea? Must I repeat? No, I really liked the explanations and the part where we got to call ourselves. But I don't think I didn't like anything. It was really nice. What, what about the game? Did you get to the game part at the end? No. OK, I wanted to find out how, whether, you, whether you thought that was. It's a little bit gimmicky, but, um, but I just wanted to hear what, what you guys thought of that. Um, and so you liked, and what about the storyline? Because um, there were two different storylines uh, for week one and week two. Which one did you like the most and, and why? Um, well, they were, they were both. When I say the storyline, I'm meaning the, the first storyline was Tembi, who's um, developing a mobile a, a social media app. And the second one was to do with COVID. I think the one with the nurse and the COVID. COVID. OK, and why, Ria? It, maybe it was more fun to do, because it was something you could relate to, maybe. <laughs> COVID is very relatable. <laughs> Okay, cool. Well, um, Ria, I really appreciate um, your uh, feedback and I'd love to hear some feedback. Uh, if I can send you guys a um, little Google form that you could post your feedback on once you've gone through the, the online um, modules. Uh, and the online modules will help you kind of recap databases. So it, it should be a, a, good, a good revision exercise if you've already gone through databases. I see you on flat files already, hey? So you've uh, gone, you've, you, you're on week three, hey, Josh, for databases. Yeah, well, we, we finished today because uh, okay. it's just... Uh... Yeah, so it will be a, it will be you know as part of um, revising for the exam. If you're wanting to go into that, it will be useful. Um, but I really would appreciate your feedback. So I'll um, I'll ask Josh to send on the group chat. Just are you uh, the on the Brimston WhatsApp group, Jan? No, I'm not. I can add you. Okay, cool. I'll I'll send it through through on there. Fabulous, guys. Thanks uh, and thanks, Ria, for your for your feedback. Yeah, you saved me as well, Ria. <laughs> okay. Bye, guys. Bye bye. Cool. Yeah. Okay. That went better than expected. Uh, thank you, Ria. Your feedback was good. <laughs> um. <laughs> Shame. Um, but no, no, thank you. And cool, guys. Um, so that's it. I'll let you know. Uh, I'm meeting with Brighter Futures tomorrow to discuss like how we're going to do the revision sessions and when we're going to do the revision sessions and when you guys are writing the tests and whatever. Um, so I'll let you guys know all that once I know. Um, but that is all of the course content for the MTA. So congratulations on finishing, guys. Even though it's done, if you're ever doing revision or whatever, feel free to contact me still on WhatsApp and I'll answer your questions. Otherwise, though, good luck for all of your exams and stuff in November. And yeah, I'll keep in touch. But yeah, thanks, guys. Cheers, everyone. Yeah, thank you, too.